I'm just going to get on with it. This was done 15 hours ago on Mario's Instagram. As you can see, if this will move up, that's where I am right now. Felt led to look at this, and I noticed this. Christians, mind your own business. Aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs. See, there's a problem. And it's not just the fact that he's only doing this because I called him out. Okay, I just put this video up. I put this one up this one right here we need to talk about these manipulative relapsed smut peddler mario i did this one monday night it's not even that that isn't the problem let's see what he says about this let's move this over oh boy oh boy does the flesh love to gossip about others and to focus on their affairs business instead of our own. The Bible reminds us, brothers and sisters, to keep our minds on our business, not others. So stop gossiping and shush. I mean, really? You're going to... Repent of gossiping and focusing on others' and affairs. That's between them and the Lord. And you want to know why I think many of us do this? Even myself, if I'm not being vigilant against the desires of my flesh, is so we don't truly look at ourselves. We stay focused on others as a way to shift the focus off the work we need to do with the man or woman in the mirror. See, here's the problem. The verse that he's quoting is not even about gossip to begin with. Do you want to know how I know? Let's read this whole chapter. 1 Thessalonians 4 Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For, we, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Mario skipping over that that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor not in the lust of concupiscence so let me pull this back up when we look at the definition 1828 dictionary i love this website uh, that's not it concu there it is what does it say lust Unlawful or irregular desire of sexual pleasure. In a more general sense, the coveting of carnal things, or an irregular appetite for worldly good, inclination for unlawful enjoyments. So here again, he's skipping over this. Even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. See, this is the verse he should have used if he was going to really go after gossiping. See, here's the thing. What we're doing right now is not gossip. Do you know why? Because this man's blocked everybody privately and has given us no other choice but to do it this way. And yet, we're the bad guys to him. Because we rebuke him. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, which we don't, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren, which are all in Macedonia. But we seech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, 
and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Where in this does it talk about gossiping? You study, you do, and you work. He's using this. to talk about gossip when that's not even what's going on and you notice he's got the one eye right here with this lady I mean come on this is this is really bad studying to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that you may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. This guy can't rebuke to save his life. I'm not saying any of us can. Because guess what? It's not about us. It's not us. Credit's given where it's due, and that's the Holy Spirit. But this guy just cannot figure it out. And he twists it to feed his ego. Because he knows he is wrong. He knows that he is still doing drugs. He knows that he's probably still doing a lot of the stuff that we called him out for. Can't really prove it. But this... Hey, Faith family, it's Brother... Oh, hush. This, you can kind of tell he's high. And upon first glance, I thought at first that he had the slit eye. But it doesn't really look like it's all that slit. Although, you can tell his eyes are a little puffy. It looks like they're pinned a little bit, but I can't really tell. And honestly, his teeth kind of look a little yellow here. So that makes me wonder what he's actually smoking. He knows. He knows he's been called out. He knows he's in the wrong. Now, we're going to do something I've not done yet. And I, I've really kind of not said anything and somehow this has 114 views and I'm the only dislike that's just mm -mm. great Mario this used to be his music channel I have since discovered because I can tell let's see the playlist Christian Stanfield Brandon Heath well, look at that you got the one eye looks like Jeremy Camp, I Am They, Casting Crowns, Chris Tomlin yet again, The Six Step Records, The 666, Carrie Job. That that looks manly to me. Am I, hold on a minute. We're gonna, we're gonna, we'll look at that in a second because I'm curious on that now. Dustin Kinsruth, lead singer of Thrice, Francesca Battistelli, that's a man. Love and the Outcome, Sidewalk Prophets, Kingdom Music, Bizzle. That sort of looks like the... Oh, what is that called? It's the Cross Lorraine or something? 
with the two the two lines right there. Phil Wickham. How many one eyes is he gonna have? Tenth Avenue North. I really did not want to play that, but here we are. I mean, look at this. Look at that. That is a man. The jawline, the forehead. And right there, she's with Billy Graham. Yeah, that's a man. That's gotta be a man. That's why. All right, let's let's do what I was gonna originally do. Uh, of course, he's not said anything on his main channel. That is outside of this. And hold on a minute. Look at the thumbnail of that. Look at the thumbnail. And he's pointing right to it. He's pointing right to it. Where it's got the pride rainbow. Are you kidding me? Didn't he try to say when he got called out and exposed for all that sex and stuff? Didn't he make a video saying, am I gay? And he kept talking about, well, there's a broken side of me. That's my sexuality. <laughs> really? We're going to screenshot that because that's... That's bad. That is really bad. Hey, Shay family, it's Brother Mario. I pray you're having a wonderful day. I wanted to go ahead and create a new video series for my Recovery in Jesus YouTube channel. I'm also going to share this to Instagram. And look at how high he is here. His eyes look a little more puffy here than they did in this little shorts video he did. Ow. Whoops. I mean, it looks about the same. It looks like he filmed this in the same day. I don't know. It just that doesn't look right. Where we're going to be examining Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, and specifically the teachings that are found in Alcoholics Anonymous's big... See, and he's still got the book, too. Notice there's no Bible. No Bible is anywhere to be found. He's got all these New Age books. Look, the second coming of the New Age. There's no secrets of the New Age. New Age. One of them was that 700 Club buddy of his. He's got the Luigi doll and the plaque. A Christian warning about AA, but no Bible. Book. This is the book that when I went to a 12-step recovery residential rehab I was given and this is the program that I was told to follow now what I'm going to share with you is my experience how God showed me that what is taught in here doesn't line up with the Bible oh there he's got the Bible but there's a problem ESV it's not King James now we're going to play something that I forgot about until the other night let's see uh, da, 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 da. where did I find that? Where is it? There it is. Okay, I'm, I'm going to actually find it this time. Okay. Well, I'm sure many of you are shocked by the title of this video, but it's true. I got kicked out of rehab. Now, if you don't even know why it is that I was in rehab, I'll go ahead and leave the link to my confession video, where in that video, I share with you all my struggles with addiction very openly, and I just laid it out there. Uh, and I also talked about the fact that I needed help. I needed to step away, take a pause from life, put myself in a rehabilitation center so that I could tackle this issue head on. Uh, it was a nine-month program. I didn't last the nine months. I lasted three months. And uh, the reason Not is even. I don't love myself fully yet. I haven't come to a place, and, and this is one of the areas that God is working in me to uh, not hate myself. 
and think that I'm not good enough. Um, I got caught for steroids in the house. Uh <coughs> There's really the reason. He was trying to say, you know, well, it just didn't work out. It just wasn't that it wasn't the right thing. No, he got kicked out. And didn't even last three months, as he's claiming. Because he was supposed to, if I remember correctly, and I might for a while. Look at how pinned his pupils are here. Which, that could be the light, but still. Wow. In fact, they are counter one another. They're in complete opposition. This over here says that the reason that you struggle with alcoholism is because you have a disease. It's not a moral failure, according to Bill, who rejected Jesus Christ as the only way to salvation, and we'll talk about that, and encouraged people to create an idol, a god of their own understanding, which is literally what the Israelites did in the desert with the golden calf, in order to access this power of this fake idol to overcome the disease that anyways we'll really get into it this is some pretty wacky stuff but it doesn't line up with this what does the bible what does god say about addiction because it's very important if you're going to overcome a problem in your life you better know what that actual problem is therefore go to the right solution right Okay, well, the Bible says in the book of Galatians that drunkenness is a lust of the flesh, and it is, it is a moral failure. Bill comes along and wants to justify his sin, and instead of just admitting that he's a sinner, that Jesus Christ needs to save him, he takes the broad path of, oh, okay, it's a disease, and I'm a victim of this thing. And Didn't he say the same things? And wasn't it him that was... Hold on, we'll find it. We'll find it. Oh, come on now. I mean, look at that. Shouldn't I just have one drink? Come on now. We'll find it. So... My sex addiction also continued to get worse because it, it was left untreated, as any untreated disease or illness or wound will. So there he goes, comparing it to a disease, even though, oh, it's not a disease. If you fell for this, like a lot of people did, you were played. And this isn't originally what I was looking for, but... Hold on, we'll see if I can find it. This weekend, I'm five days sober, praise God. And one day at a time. I'm going to uh, AA meetings and I'm meeting up with pastor and I'm trying to stay in community and uh, I'm on my way to uh, a Christian rehabilitation home for nine months so they can uh, help me. So they can help me, not Jesus. But yet, he's going to tell you, oh, it's wrong. Develops a 12-step New Age program Ouch. with a little bit of Christianity blended into New Ageism and Occultism in order to create what we have as the AA program. Now, God, in his mercy and grace, while I was in this program and the Holy Spirit was showing me, because I always go to this. This is my foundation. You're not... So, so, so... It's your foundation, but yet you twist it. You can't twist a foundation. What's your foundation made of, Jello? Because it sure seems like it with the way you twist it to feed your tiny little ego. I'm not going to come around in my life and try and teach me stuff that doesn't line up with this. Everything I take in must, must harmonize and coincide with the teachings of Scripture. 
And so as I began to examine Bill and the AA doctrine and what it teaches, it was obvious to me that this is false. And so one of the guys in the home actually by coincidence came along and gave me this book, 12 Steps to Destruction, an analysis of the 12 step program from a biblical perspective to show that it's false. And so now I know this video is going to be upsetting to many of my brothers and sisters who have had positive experiences with AA. Listen, first of all, I need to create this video because there's people like me who are Bereans, meaning we we need things to line up like this, okay? And what we've done is... But whatever, that shouldn't matter. If you knew it didn't line up, why did you go? If you knew that it didn't line up, and I seem to remember videos on his old channel, his original channel, where he was saying AA is a cult. But yet he was going to meetings. He just refuses authority. It is. Well, it should line up with the Bible. Well, okay, good. Great. And if it doesn't line up with the Bible, then you take it to the Lord. But you know what? Working doesn't line up with the Bible either sometimes. Sometimes you got bosses that hate God so much, and then that they tell you, hey, you can't say God bless you. You can't tell somebody you're going to pray for them. That doesn't line up either, but you know what? It might be crooked, but you got to do it. you got to do your part and say, you know what? I need to overcome this in Jesus' name. He, he just, he doesn't get it. He still ain't getting it. We've looked at what this says, and we've taken what this says, and realized that they don't go hand in hand. Who, who's we? Who's we? Oh, this was interesting, too. I didn't... <coughs> Forgive me, I just ate. I, I didn't realize this. This was something interesting, too. A couple years ago, when I was uploading here full time, let's see if I can find that video. Uh, there it is. Direct message to the negligent false Christian martyr. Let's end this feud. Meet me on here no, at this time, November 19th, 10 a.m. And what does it say? As seen in the pinned comment, Mario pushed out. What did that say? Dude, you're demonically possessed. You is not the right your. You're a false accusing lost devil. I don't ever want to talk to you. Notice in your comments you will make this public because it's a trap, even though comments are already public to start with. You're sick, man, and we are praying for you. We are praying for you. That sounds an awful lot like Mark chapter 5. We're going to start verse 1 till I feel like stopping. And they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, My name is Legion. For we are many. We are praying for you. I don't even know why these are coming up. Anyway. My name is Legion for we are many. And he was going to say we are praying for you. Hmm. And he besought him that much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and the devils besought him, saying, 
Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out, and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city, and in the country. And they went out to see what it was, what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil had the legion, sitting clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. He, when he was coming to the ship, he had, he had been possessed with the devil, prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. So he was going, where is that? There it is, verse 9. My name is Legion, for we are many, and we are praying for you. That sounds kind of familiar. I didn't catch that until the other day. I thought that was interesting. Okay, and because of that, I can't continue this 12-step recovery stuff. And uh, even though you got kicked out for steroids, we just saw that a minute ago. Oh, wait, no, I still got it up, don't I? Uh, we'll go right there. Place and and this is one of the areas that God is working in me to uh, not hate myself and think that I'm not good enough. Um, I got caught for steroids in the house. So he blamed. Well, I just he blamed the whole thing on his father, and then here he blamed. Well, I just don't love myself, which is a cop out. I don't feel good enough. But then he threw in the un what was supposed to be the unnecessary detail, which actually was the bigger problem. I got caught for steroids. But he's going to say here, well, I'm just not going to follow it because it's not biblical. We're not even a third, we're barely a third of the way into this. And this is bad. And I need to go to the biblical way of overcoming this sin. Okay? And we'll talk about that. How... Uh, if you think it's a disease, there's an entirely different approach that you're going to have to this thing than if you believe what it is truly, which is a lust of the flesh. It is a moral failure, and you're going to go to Jesus Christ to be born again and new. In AA, you got to be kidding. Oh, this is one of those robo calls. Hello. You know what? Let's have some fun with this. We're going to have some fun. Why not? Let's have some fun. Hello? I, hello? I'm trying to uh, figure out about my... <laughs> I didn't even catch what he said. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> once in a, you know what, once in a blue moon, I, I love to, to mess with those people because they're just so stupid and the scripts are all the same. <laughs> oh, man. How funny that we go from one scam artist to another. That's, that's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> you can't script that. I'm telling you, <laughs> I get, I get at least two of those a week, and half the time they just don't even bother. And it's from like a city that I have not even been to. That's. <sighs> I needed that laugh. I'm telling you. They will forever declare themselves to be alcoholics. In fact, at the meetings, I remember I would sit down and we would sit in a circle and go around and people, if you notice how he's wringing his hands like, who I've got, I got the idea of, hey, I'm going to try to see if I can, you know, sucker them into 
my idea. Notice how he's trying to figure that out. He's like that evil, evil doctor. I mean, really? And he was kept saying, uh, uh, uh. I mean, that's just, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just reading off a script that I'm shocked we can't see. Just like the other guy. Introduce themselves like this. Hi, my name is Mario and I'm an alcoholic. The Holy Spirit convicted me to not proclaim that my identity is my sin. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm redeemed. I'm new. Oh, okay, but you got caught for steroids in the house. How were you getting them? How many times did they check you and how many warnings did you get and before they threw you out? Which one is it? Was it the steroids or was it the unbiblical whatever? Because I really believe the former. I'm forgiven. And so one time, even at one of these sessions, <laughs> everyone went around the room. You know, hi, I'm an alcoholic. I'm an addict. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. But not admitting that it's sin. You know, I got a disease. No, you're a sinner. Um, and you need Jesus to be set free. Okay, guess what? So does everybody. So does everybody. Now are the, oh, is everybody going to admit it? Well, no, of course not. Some people know that God's not pleased. And I think deep down you do too, because if, if God were pleased with you, you wouldn't be blaming everybody but yourself. Even in this, you blamed everybody but yourself. You blamed your addictions on a wound that your dad caused, even though you'd later admit that, oh, well, he just talked me down. He, you know, this would do all that. Call me a rebel and a punk, and I rebelled. Free <laughs> and born again. But anyways, so they're going around, and then it finally got to me. And you know how I responded? I said, "Hi, my name is Mario, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ." So I had. He's making it about himself. He's trying to glorify himself. Well, I took the high road and did this. Somebody that takes the high road won't announce that they took the high road. Being smart's know what knowing what to do. Being wise is saying, I don't want to do it publicly and you know, just puff myself up. This man on the other hand was like, Well, they got around to me and I did this. This guy is a joke, and he's high in this video right now. I had a hard, hard time with this because it's false, and we're going to examine that, and I encourage you that are going to find that difficult to truly be true to God's word. Don't let this thing become an idol to you, okay? And stick to God's word and what it says, all right? And this does not say that it's a disease that you're going to have for the rest of your life, and you need to keep on going to meetings, and you need a sponsor, and you keep on needing to work the steps. No, it says repent, be baptized, be born again, be transformed. The old is gone, so the alcoholic, the addict is dead. Behold, the new has come. You are not an addict the rest of your life. Now, you, and we'll discuss this, will have to be vigilant against the sin of addiction. It is your besetting sin. It's not your disease. It's your besetting sin. It's the weakness that you have. And so for the rest of your life, yes, you're going to have to remain vigilant in this area because the enemy knows that this is how he gets you. But the reason that you stumble in this area often in your life isn't because of some disease that you're just a victim to. No, it's your sin nature that's gone out of control. You need to learn to live by the Spirit, crucify the desires of the flesh, which is what the Scriptures say. So why haven't you? Why haven't you done it? Dude, we're going on year number nine of this. You making money. August 23rd, 2012. And it's, what, June 9th, 2021. Hey, everyone, the ministry has exploded, and I'm going to go full-time. I want to give it all I got for Jesus. I want to submit to him so that he can do a work in my life that affects others for his kingdom. His being lowercase. 
But that's really not the point. I need all the help with this I can get from my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm starting a studio for the ministry and I'm in need of equipment, books, materials, etc. I feel led to support this ministry and help equip us there again. Us. Who's the us? How did it go from singular to plural and it's just him? With materials for future projects, you can make a donation here. And there's the PayPal link. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you do not have to give to support. You all have, all, have already supported me just by clicking on this page. God bless you all. We're going to screenshot this, because I thought I had this, and I... For some reason, I don't. But that's okay. Year 9. You would have already been freed had you actually been taking this seriously and not putting that up as an idol. You want to talk about a book being an idol, but yet you got that plaque behind you. You got all them New Age books. Where does his heart lie? To do. And that way you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And we'll talk about that in the book of Galatians as we do our Bible study. But uh, just wanted to uh, let you guys know we're going to look at the occultic origins of AA. We're going to look at uh, is it disease or is it a sin? And I'm going to show you that Bill, uh, one of the, the main founders and creators of this program, was an occultish. New Ager, who created a false god, and he even practiced uh, the contact of spirits. Like, this guy was a New Ager. <laughs> that what he admitted to? Isn't that what this guy admitted to? So, he, so a New Ager is going to call out another New Ager in the name of Jesus Christ, even though he's got a, a, a bastard Bible, and he's got all these books. Sex yoga and all the spirit contact. I mean, what, what's his? Hold on. No, no, no. Is that still his main video? Let's let's go back to his main channel. Oh come on now. Now I'll just we'll just do this. Look at that. That's his first video, and he's high in this too. New Age Movement got me possessed by 30 spirits. So he admits to it, but yeah, he's going to call somebody else out on it. Are you kidding me? And people think that, that this stuff has Christian roots because it started off at the Oxford Group, and yes, it did, but then a bill came along and grabbed what was being done there and turned it into something else by integrating this form of idolatry into it that you can create a higher power however you want. I mean, I had a meeting once, guys. This is how ridiculous AA meetings are. The guy at the front goes, oh, you just need a higher power, and doesn't matter what that is. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Idolatry, this guy up here is... Um, that's kind of how you have the camera angled. I just noticed that, too. You got slightly down to where people got to look up a little bit to you. And you want to talk about idolatry. Oh, okay. Got it. He's teaching idolatry. Yes, it does matter who you go to. And he went on to say that, oh, it doesn't matter what higher power you have, whether that's Jesus or Buddha or God or this light bulb or the institution of AA or even myself, he said. Man, I almost hit the floor. The level of spiritual idolatry and blasphemy that that is, is next level. Okay. Again, he's blaming them, even though he got kicked out for steroids. Okay. Okay. And I know some of you may not comprehend that and think I'm being extreme there. Well, go back to the Old Testament and see how God treats idolatry. Go back to when the Israelites were in the desert and they thought that they could just create a God of their own understanding. And they did so through creation of a golden calf, this higher power as they understood it. And see how that worked out for them. Not good. Okay. How did so it work out for you? You've been exposed for so long, dude. 
you have been exposed and rebuked so much. And even when you, in your own admittance, confessed, you still didn't. You still did not even think about anybody but yourself. You deflected. And my goodness gracious, you are such an egotistical fraud. So spiritual idolatry, something that Christians should run away from and have nothing to do with, with which is what a... a and, that, and that's what we've been saying about you. People need to run away from idolizing you. But yet you still got people trying to make everybody else look bad that rebukes you and make you look good. I got a comment on one of the newer videos. I think it was the first one. Where they tried to, you know, say, well, you went to this, you went to that. You know, saying I went to a secular college for two years, which I did. And by God's... And, and I got out of it, not because... Honestly, not because I wanted to, but because the Lord kept shutting doors. So, you know what? I was like, you know what? This isn't, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. So I got out of it. And praise the Lord about, let's see, what would it be now? Well, technically back in February, I finished my last class and I graduated from a Christian University, and of course that's used very loosely, as they, as most, if not all of them, have sold out to 501c3 nonsense. You know, I finished. Does it really mean anything in the long run? No. But the Lord let, let it happen. The Lord led me to it. I said, okay. Do what you want to do, Lord. And that was about the time that I started going there, that when I started really going at it, at this man, rebuking him. Tail end of my time at one university, going to another. The Lord has things happen for a reason. He has you at that place for a reason. At Jericho Road. Uh oh, there we go. He had you there for a reason. And all you did Let's just go back to the vomit. For steroids. Let me tell you this, too. When I lost my second job back in August of last year, I don't think I could tell you how pissed off and how angry I was for the next... Honestly, weak. And I finally felt comfortable at a place. I'm like, okay, you know what? Yeah, the corona hoax is still going, but you know what? We're just going to make do with what we got. Made a little bit more money than I did at my first job, and I'm like, okay, that's, that's a blessing. Wasn't going to argue that. Is it about the money? No. But I enjoyed it. And then I got fired... For something that nobody ever got trained on, even after. And nobody except the lady that should have stopped my mistake is still there. So I got to thinking about it. I said, you know what? The Lord had me there for a little bit and got me out of it. Because it turned into a hellhole. It really did. I mean, that that's not the most Christian way to put it, but it's true. It turned into a hellhole after I left. I mean, everybody at front of house quit two days after I got terminated. And you know what happened? I applied to places, got turned down by robots, got told by one place, well, you're overqualified, actually. And I remember that Tuesday after I got, I got fired on Monday, and Tuesday I got I, I I remember doing nothing at all. Like, I didn't even get out of bed. At all. I mean, I, I remember not even moving. But 
crying. And I don't, and honestly, I don't even know how I didn't get so angry that I didn't just punch a hole in my wall. I honestly was so mad. And really didn't want to do anything. And people could tell it for a week. I mean, I remember that Saturday and Sunday after. I didn't sleep for about 40 hours. That's a long time to go with no sleep. I just could not sleep. I'm like, I just don't. I don't feel right. That Sunday, one of my friends said, hey, or told somebody else, he said, hey, he's got a job where I'm at. And I really didn't even have to apply. So, I mean, he's like, go ahead and apply, but I mean, you've already got it. We need some help anyway. And so I did. And you know what? I got the job. Making it a little bit more. Not much more, but a little bit more than I was at the other job. I've done it again. And I love it. And I've been losing a little bit of weight. Not much, but I mean, enough for it to count. I can definitely move around a lot more, that's for sure. Stocking. God had all that happen for a specific reason, and we may never understand why things happen. And frankly, it isn't for us to understand. But if you truly surrender to the Holy Spirit, and you surrender to the will of God, and you let Him take over your life, He's going to put you right where He needs you. It may not be what you want, and yes, it might very well be crooked. But you know what? It works out. And sometimes you got to be the example. You got to be the representation of Jesus Christ. You got to be the example. And there may be somebody where you're at. Maybe they get saved, or because the Lord used you, or a seed may be planted. You know, you don't know until it happens. And frankly, you may not ever know if it happens. You were at that rehab for a reason. To finally get clean of your addictions and your struggles to drugs, to alcohol, to sex, whatever. And you, in your admittance to, you admitted to squandering that. You got caught for steroids, and now you're going to blame AA? This guy just does not understand the basics of Christianity. And you know what? Right now, I'm kind of in a holding pattern personally. I'm trying to look for places to actually use the degree I got. And it might take a little bit. I really don't know. We'll just have to see. If the Lord leads me somewhere else, then He's going to put me somewhere else. I, I chased a squirrel, but let's get back to this. And then you have these uh, Christians who end up helping other people. And when they get to that step, they are actually being used to uh, lead that person into idolatry by encouraging them to just create whatever higher power they want in order to get set free from this. And they got to keep going to meetings. Anyways, we'll get into it. So um, there it is, guys. Stay tuned for it. I'm going to share with you my experiences and knowledge. And uh, what this is going to do is it's going to uh, undo lies because the, the recovery community really believes this, that it's a disease. No, it's a sin. It's a sin. And we in 
the recovery community who know the truth, who stay faithful to God's word, who are bold enough to be, I'm going to be hated for sharing this, by the way, but I don't care because the Bible says, have I become your enemy for telling you the truth? Because I'm just... Uh, we've used the same thing for you. You hate it when people don't, when, when people tell you what you don't want to hear. There's a difference between your little comment saying you're going to make it public because it's a trap and what you do. If I ever delete a comment, it's a troll or it's spam. And by troll, I mean somebody that just consistently is going to say, well, it's just going to shill. It's like on Twitter, all these government shills that are on there defending a communist, but yet accusing me of supporting Trump. I mean, that is just, it's, it's foolish. Or delete, I delete comments that say, well, Mario fart and all this. The fart trolls. Which supposedly are still doing what they are. I don't really know the verity of that because, I, frankly, I don't care. You only let people kiss your rear. And with the scent that you have, I'm surprised they do. And it's not the drugs. You are so full of crap, your eyes ought to be brown. Even your Bible's brown. You are so full of crap, your eyes should be brown. Are you kidding me? Just relaying what this says. And this specifically has Galatians uh, categorizing drunkenness, not as a disease that people are a victim for, but as a moral failure. And if you go to the internet and you're going to check up on, um, just do it now, okay? Google, do, do this if you, if you don't believe me. Google, is, alcohol, uh, is alcoholism a, um, a moral failure? And what you're going to see is article after article of people who went to AA and then AA taught them, no, 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 it's not a moral failure. It's not sin. You're a victim. You were just born this way. There's no Why way. Why is he talking like this? Oh, you're not born this way. Why is he talking like that? He even's got the mannerisms of it. I mean, really? Let's, let's do that. Let's see here. You got a national helpline. Addiction Education Society. Let's see. Looks like a one eye right there if I didn't know any better. Kind of does. For centuries, man has been drinking, whatever. The more common view is that drug addicts are weak or bad people unwilling to lead moral lives and control their behavior. See, none of these really say. Surgeon General, out addiction, not a moral failing. So the government's telling them it's not a moral failing. Science says yes. Who do you really trust? Science, the government, or God? Okay. So then why are you... Who are you to say it? If you don't even believe what you're saying... How do you have the audacity to say it? Because yeah, I can tell you don't believe it because you're still high as a kite here in this video. Way you could have overcome this. And it enables them to stay stuck in this lie that it is a disease. It's not a disease, it's a sin. And Jesus came to set free from sin. And even if it was a sin, Jesus heals all sin anyways. And disease. Sorry, if it was disease... Wait, what? He called himself. Let's let's hear that again. Uh, I might really went back too far. A disease. It's not. Um, you were just born this way. There's no way you could have overcome this. And it enables them to stay stuck in this lie that it is a disease. It's not a disease. It's a sin. And Jesus came to set free from sin. And even if it was a sin, Jesus heals all sin. Right there. Right there. Oh, he just, he, he, he didn't, he just misspoke. Bull. 
That's his true color showing. He don't believe a single word he says. Anyways, and disease. Sorry, if it was disease, Jesus heals dis uh, all diseases anyway. So he's oh, stumbling. This one, this one. Uh, yeah, he doesn't heal this one. The stuff that I heard in these places is next level, not biblical, and needs to be addressed. So excited to share that experience with you. I'm sorry for those of you that the truth that I'm going to present would offend, but the truth is the truth, whether you like it or not. And when we're dealing with things like drunkenness and how and trying to help people overcome that let's stick to what this says okay let's stick to the bible jesus christ yeah sure. look, look at that look no 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 oh, i wish this would go away holding it upside down how do you get this oh i hate to do it this way i'm so now well, it's not even gonna work if i do it full screen i wish these would just I don't know why YouTube has it like that, but here, maybe I can, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Instead of what Bill said, this insanity that teaches a bunch of lies, okay? He lie. had that right up, but yet the Bible was upside down. This is a joke. This is a complete and utter joke. And anybody that's still stupid enough to fall for this, you're lost. There is no excuse for you. Nothing's too hard for the Lord, but this man's going to lead you to hellfire. This man's leading you to eternal damnation. Amidst all the craziness in this wicked world, there is hope. See, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But by God's grace, he can set you free from that sin. He can and he will. If you surrender to him, and you repent, and believe in Jesus Christ, and what he did on the cross, he died on the cross and rose again three days later. Works don't save. Mario does not save. Get that through your head. If, if, if this was... Hold on. This, maybe I can... If he actually believed what he was saying, he wouldn't be holding it upside down right now. Is that Zondervan? I can't even tell. Maybe maybe he can... Maybe he's holding it up. Uh, hold on. Let's, let's mute this, because I don't really want to hear this. Oh, I can't even tell. Wait a minute. I can't tell. It, it looks like a Zondervan. Oh, well, I mean... Well, you get the point. If, it, if that's a Zondervan Bible right there, then he's already in the wrong. Because cause they support... They got that Queen James Bible as a mockery. If that's actually a Zondervan Bible, and I, again, I can't tell because I couldn't get a, find enough a shot. I'm not really going to look right now. But you're idolizing a man that does not believe a single thing he says. He's going to tell you how to live, but yet he can't figure it out himself. That the eyes tell all. The eyes have it. You can find a King James Bible for a dollar. While you still can, stop making excuses into getting a hard copy King James Bible. You gonna give this man money, you can give you can get a Bible for yourself. Cause any amount you give him is gonna go to his drugs. This needs to end, and it ends today.